Mm, mm, I just, I, I, oh my god. I just, you know what? This week, I, I believe this. Since we're back on gaming, I have to ask everyone, what the fuck is going on? What is going on this week that everyone has just lost their shit? They just, they just went crazy. Did everyone just take a bunch of crazy pills and just say, look, we're just going to act a fool and, and then expect me not to report on it? I mean, at the news that I'm reading, I can't even take this entire video seriously. I mean, once you hear this stuff, and I'm sure you already see the header, you're like, the fuck? Yeah, yeah, I just, I don't understand this. I, I really don't. So, it's not much of the community this week. There's some people who act a fool in the community, but not much, okay? This is mostly people who are outsiders or the companies, or people who work in said companies, who are just, they've just gone completely out of bounds. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's get started with what you saw in the header. Let's talk about Pokemon Go, shall we? Yeah. Woman tells police she was raped by a Pokemon Go character after she felt an assault. That's right. And the virtual reality game detected the creature in her bedroom. Yeah, that's where we're going today. Yeah, that's where we're going, okay? It says the woman said she woke up to find a Pokemon on top of her in bed. That's what she did. She woke up to find a virtual creature on bed. Okay, okay. It says she had been playing the popular game in her home before she fell asleep. Police dismissed her claims and told her to seek psychiatric help, which they did right. They did exactly right. So there's, there's more to this, okay? This is, this is what I don't understand, okay? There's more. Because it gets worse. That's right. She told officers that she had been sexually assaulted by a giant Pokemon in her apartment in the Russian capital of Moscow. The married woman, whose name has not been released, of course they're not going to release it. Who the hell was their name tied to this? Who? Like, see, like, come on. It says, had reportedly been playing Pokemon Go before she fell asleep. So it sounds like she was playing the game, right? She fell asleep, and she just had a nightmare. That's what it sounds like, right? Okay. But it says... She claimed that she woke up to find a huge Pokemon laying on top of her body and says it was raping her. Okay? Alright. <laughs> and this is the thing, the thing is the article I'll put in the info bar. Big picture of, of Charmander, so he's the culprit apparently. Alright? <laughs> but, but there's more, okay? The woman says that the Pokemon disappeared when she jumped out of bed, but says the Pokemon Go app on her phone could still detect the same virtual character's presence in her bed. So pretty much, if you've ever played the game, when she woke up, the Pokemon was like, oh, I gotta go, and left, and that big cloud of smoke came up. That's pretty much what happened, okay? <laughs> like, this is, seriously, like, like, come on! Come on, people! But, but there's more. There's more. That's right. So, <laughs> I can't believe this. She woke up to her husband, right? Mind you, to tell her husband. What happened, to, and told police officers, that he, he also told police officers, he did not believe her and to go see a, a, a psychiatrist, all right? So everyone but her feels as though, bitch, you need help. That's what it is, all right? That's what it is. <laughs> but there's more. <laughs> the Russian news website, Blocknot, reports that the police did not believe her, it says, did not believe her either, and that the woman went to see a psychic who was unable to help her. You need psychiatric help. Go see a psychic. <laughs> Oh my god. I, I just... Th th seriously, th this is me right now. I'm just gone. I'm just like, come on. That, mind gone. I just... I, I can't do this. I can't. Like, this. no, no. We're gonna move on. Because this... Clearly, she's fucking crazy. She needs fucking help. I just... Mm -mm, mm -mm. No. There's more. There's more. Because there's other people who are fucking crazy as well. Still, Pokemon Go. Right? A Detroit couple is suing the company, that's right, the developers who made Pokemon Go, simply because they feel as though they're not safe in their own home anymore. That's right. So, this couple is upset because, mind you, they live in Detroit, and they don't feel safe because, apparently, they live across the street from a park. That's right. That is a hot spot for po Pokemon Go. They're claiming that the GPS is bringing uh, was the players from the park over onto their private property and looking into their windows. That's what they're saying. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Who the fuck is looking in your window? Seriously, I just want to know because there's no Pokemon there. Even if you use the AR in the game, you have to understand. If they're holding the, the thing up like this, they don't have to go but so far. You should know when you're trying to get a Pokemon, you can only go but X amount of meters. So if they're trying to catch a Pokemon... That wouldn't bring them onto your property. Now, if you want to say that it randomly popped up on your grass or whatever, then guess what? They're going to walk over there, but they're not looking in your fucking window. I don't want to hear that. But they turn, they turn around and say how, you know, they've been cursing at players. And, mind you, they live, 
across the street from a fucking park. But they feel as though their quiet community is now, it's now, you know, it's, it's, it's destroyed. They don't feel safe sitting on their porch. That's right. Because of Pokemon Go players. You live in Detroit. But you don't feel safe sitting on your porch because Pokemon Go players. That's, that's, that's what we're on right now. That's what we're on. You're fucking crazy too. Why is it that every time something comes up when it's trendy or it's popular, these fucking crazies come out the woodwork? Why is this? I'm trying to figure this out. Because you've got to be kidding me that you're going to blame your entire neighborhood going into shambles because of Pokemon Go. Because, mind you, you're living across the street from a park. You have to understand, you chose to live across the street from a fucking park. Regardless if Pokemon Go was around or not. You're going to have a lot of volume at a park. You're going to have a lot of noise, a lot of disruption. It doesn't matter if it was a park. It doesn't matter if it was a playground. It is, if you decide to live across the street from a public area like that, you have to expect a lot of noise. You have to expect a lot of chaos. Because there's going to be kids playing and everything else. So it goes to tell me, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. That's what it tells me. You've got to be kidding me. You are upset. Because more people who are staying out of trouble and playing a game... Mind you, you live in Detroit. <laughs> Alright, Detroit. They're staying out of trouble and playing a game you're bitching and moaning over. Get some fucking help. Seriously. Let's move on. That's right, there's more. Salon blames Pokemon Go for Metro Manila traffic. Because, you know, they didn't have a problem with traffic before this. So now we have to blame Pokemon Go players for traffic jams and stuff like that. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. You know, I'm not going to go that far. Let's move on to some positive news, I guess. All right? The Cleveland Indians, for those who don't know, they hosted not too long ago a Pokemon Go night. That's right, at the baseball field. I feel this is a great idea, or was a great idea, for the Cleveland Indians. It brings people into the park. You get more families into the park. You get other people who aren't really... Uh, Baseball fans that much will probably come into the park because the, the idea was to bring people in, generate revenue, because it really doesn't cost you much. You're going, everyone's dropping lures within the baseball field, you know, or should say into the stadium so that people can run around and have fun. You're busy, you've got fireworks going on, you're selling food, you have all these types, you have everything at your disposal in the stadium. This was a great idea for the Cleveland Indians. As far as I'm concerned, this is a win-win, does not cost them much, and people are going to have fun, and that's it. So the Cleveland Indians did a great thing. Now, speaking of great things also as well for Pokemon Go, Pokemon Go saves struggling ice cream shop Mad Hatters. That's right. They saved the ice cream shop because apparently, you know, the way where Mad Hatters is is a big Pokemon spot, and when people go by, of course, they're buying ice cream. It was a struggling shop because they weren't selling anything in revenue wise, and because it's been hot out as of late, of course, people are getting ice cream as well when they're playing Pokemon. So it saved ice cream shop. I have no problem with this. Once again, more positive news for Pokemon. Now, I have to talk about the bad news as well. Because we're seeing some problems here. Okay? Nintendo. Last week, you shut down Nintendo Power. Alright? And we're finding out not too long ago, the reason why you shut down the Nintendo Power, uh, was it, the archives, is because you're coming out with a, was a big, massive book of all Nintendo Power stuff yourself. So, okay. Still, I feel it was a dick move to do. But, let's keep going on, alright? We know that Nintendo shut down Metroid not too long ago, which is, a, if you haven't played the Metroid 2 remake or even witnessed it, you are missing out. It is an amazing game. You are missing out. By all means, please, watch someone's stream, watch someone's YouTube videos, get the game yourself, play it. It's an amazing game. It is, okay? I'm just saying it now. So we know that right now you're on this shutdown kick when it comes to shutting down a lot of things, Nintendo. But here's one thing again. Nintendo is shutting down Pokemon fan game Uranium. That's right, so they're shutting that down as well. This game took, what, nine years to make? I believe the Metroid one took, what, ten years to make? Uh, this one took nine years to make. Fan-made game, and Nintendo's already butthurt over it, shutting it down. I don't... It's clear that Nintendo still doesn't understand how to work with the community and its fans. Still doesn't. I don't understand how you say, look, this is a great game, this is a quality game, maybe we can put it on our virtual store. It's been suggested many times. You know, put it on the virtual store... It seems Nintendo just, no, just cease and desist. Just stop it. Just shut it down. Which makes no sense to me. Nine years in the making. You can, I'm sure you can still find this game. You can, I believe the online is still up too for it. You can find this game, you can still play it, but Nintendo wants to shut it down. Why? Why, Nintendo? You know, I'm, also, I'm, I'm starting to feel as though, when it comes to uh, Owada, 
you know, passing on. Because for those who don't know, we found out not too long ago, Awada was working on Pokemon Go while he was in, the, you know, pretty much, I don't want to say on his deathbed, but in his hospital bed. You know what I mean? Like, we're finding out that that's how much heart he had. I feel as though if he was still around, that these things wouldn't be happening right now. He would have worked within the community, I feel. But there's more. That's right. Pokemon Go. Still, more Pokemon news. Pokemon Go gyms are being held onto, that's right, being held hostage pretty much, by an egg glitch. That's right. So apparently, if you're at a gym or whatever, you can be the leader of this gym, and you don't even have to defend it. That's right. You don't have to put up any Pokemon, nothing. I'm going to show you the video so you can see exactly what the glitch looks like. Definitely a problem that needs to be fixed. But there's more. That's right. For those who don't know on their Twitter, uh, the developer's Twitter not too long ago, on their official Twitter, uh, they came out and said that Pokemon, because a lot of people have been complaining about in Pokemon Go, where they can't catch certain Pokemon, they just keep running, or they keep breaking the ball. Apparently it's a glitch as well that they need to fix. So I would say just wait. Once again, this development, this development staff is having a lot of problems. They're making a lot of bad decisions when it comes to Pokemon Go on how they're shaping it. Let me tell you now, okay? Especially here in Philadelphia, it went from catching all these rare Pokemon to now seeing just Weedles, Poliwhirls. That's pretty much it. Every once in a while you see an Eevee. Every once in a while. But it's interesting because, the, you know, the Pokemon, you know, that's in the area, you usually get about nine Pokemon, right? Now it's down here to two to three. So whatever update that they did, it fucked the game. And it's not fun anymore as far as I'm concerned. It's just not. But a lot of people feel as though it's not fun as well. Because for those who don't know, let's talk about what this new update, what, you know, anyone knows when you're in a car, okay, and you're driving, or you're a passenger in your car, it tells you that you're going too fast, right? The little thing comes up, oh, you're going too fast, slow down. You know, they don't count your steps when you're trying to catch, you know, when you're trying to move a specific, uh, was it, distance so that you can incubate your eggs in Pokemon Go, right? So, there's been a lot of problems with that because people who are on bikes are saying, hey, this is not catching my distance because of, you know, you're, on, you're in motion. People who have walked fast have reported that they're also getting the same thing. So apparently if you want people to go outside and, you know, walk around and, and catch Pokemon, you have to have a specific pace. If you're going too fast, it'll say, you're, it'll say that, no, you're not getting any uh, merit for, you know, incubating your eggs because you're going too fast. Now, here's another problem that we're seeing as of late that has come up. People with disabilities who are playing this game. Because it's hard for them to get around as well. So, of course, you know, they have their scooters, they have their chairs and everything. But if they use that, guess what? They get the same thing that says, hey, you're going too fast. And they don't get any credit for it. So, apparently, you know, the Niantic, or Niantic, however you like to say it, uh, the development staff did not think about these things before they implemented this, you know, this thing. Because uh, they were trying to say, well, people are driving and catching Pokemon. But you didn't, I'll play this, you half-ass thought about it and didn't think about the overall perspective of who it was going to affect, okay? Definitely needs something to be fixed there. So, like I said, developers, they implement things, but don't see the consequences in those things before they implement them. So, of course, this game is screwed. It's, it's hurt. It's hurt bad. Once you got rid of the tracker and you wanted people to go around, now that we're seeing that you've pretty much cut down the, was it, the... The Pokemon sighted list, which, like I said, in my experience here, that's what it feels like. Like I said, I'm not going to keep doing this and, and walking around and, and holding it up to my face and be like, all right, nothing is in the area. Nothing. I can get, I'm getting the same three. Out of nine spaces, I'm getting the same three Pokemon. No, I'm not doing that. I'm not just going to walk around randomly. It's not happening. Especially right now, where it's like 100 degrees outside and the humidity is horrible. I'm not risking it. I'm not doing it. All right? The fact that you're taking away the trackers, the third-party trackers, some of them are still working, so it's worth looking, you know what I mean, at those trackers and saying, okay, there's nothing in this area right now. I'm not going out there in that heat just right now. If you go out and say, okay, well, there's something rare out there, I'm going to go out there. You know, I'm going to go get it. But other than that, no. Not doing it. It's too damn hot to be doing it. I'm not wasting my time doing it. And there's too many people we've seen as of late, especially in the park here, where they're just sitting in the park dropping lures and lures and lures and talking to these people. They're not getting anything. And they're sweating, and there's times where you be like, here, here's a bottle of water. Because you're risking your life out here in this heat. 
You don't have enough damn common sense to take your ass inside? No. Like I said, the developers did not think about this. Not, not, not enough. Not enough. They need to talk to the fans. And you, like I said before, listen to the fans. Because the fans is going to keep you afloat. Right now, you have lost so many people due to the fact that you got rid of the trackers, and then you killed your own tracker. You haven't fixed it yet. So, people are like, you know what, I don't, I don't have no time for this anymore. I don't. But there are fans that are still trying to help you because they're giving you ideas on how to keep the game going, but you're not listening. For those who don't know, fans have already tried to talk to them about having Team Rocket come in and have invasions at the gyms. That is such a great idea as far as I'm concerned, but once again, the developers are not listening to the fans. Now, Pokemon fans, we need to have this talk. I've talked about this before. I'll have to stress this again. On Twitter, okay, in their mentions, why are you acting like fucking idiots, huh? You look, I'll play this. There are fans who are trying to help you, all right? There are fans who are trying to bridge the gap with the developers. You understand that, right? They're pointing out the flaws in the game. They are pointing out the problems in the game, the glitches and stuff like that. They want them to fix it. You coming along and saying, because I've seen it last night, I saw it. Bring Pokemon Go to Brazil, bring it to India! Why the fuck? And then it gets multiple retweets, mass retweets, that push down all the other problems that is trying to bridge the gap to fix the fucking app. Shut the fuck up. Can't you do that? Just, can you just stop until the game? Why would you want a game anyway that's fucked up right now? Won't you let the developers fix it, get all the bugs out of the way, then wait for a fucking release? No, you need to have it right now, and you're going to keep bugging them, and keep getting retweets, and keep pushing down all the other shit that could possibly help this game, so that you can get some attention, so that you can get your hands on the game. Give it time, alright? It's that simple. Let these people iron out all these problems, get the actual structure of this game, because clearly it has no structure right now. It needs to be implemented, they need to fix the tracker. Like, see, there's a lot of things that's wrong with this game. And all you're doing is bitching and moaning about how you want it. I don't give a shit what country you're in. Or what ha who has it. The fact is, the people who do have it right now, they're having a lot of problems with it. Let it get ironed out first. Then, once it's done, and it's ironed out, and it's fixed, then, you know, everyone can get together and say, yes, this country deserves it, this country needs it, all these countries need it. Stop acting like fucking children. It is fucking horrible to see. Once again... On Twitter. That's what you're only worried about yourselves. Also, I say this because I see a lot of people, oh, I caught such and such. And then you link, you mention it in their mentions. Who gives a shit what you caught? You can say it amongst, you know, the people who follow you, but don't tag fucking, you know, the, the, the you know, the, the official sites and all. Why? You're looking for fucking attention. That's what you're doing. You're not talking amongst the people who follow you and say, hey, I caught this. Another person says, hey, I caught this. That's different. Because you're actually having a conversation. No, you're throwing it out there to an official site hoping that they see what you caught. Who gives a shit what you caught? Like I said, you are hurting people who are trying to help, you know, fix the app. That's what you're doing. You add nothing to the conversation when you post a picture of you. Oh, look, selfie with the fucking Charizard. No one cares. No one cares. Anyways, in more news, Pokemon news. Pokemon World Champions uh, Championships get some big esports prizes. I'll put the link in the info bar for this uh, year's Pokemon World Championships coming up, okay? Now, we talked about not too long ago how other games could benefit from this Go type of theme, right? I said before, y'all saw on Twitter when I when I asked, uh, was it Kotecmo, hey, Mabel, you can make a Fatal Frame Go. Some of you said a Ghostbusters Go. Some of you just came up with a lot of ideas. Well, we are survival horror fans. We're getting one. That's right, for those who don't know, Night Terrors is a Pokemon Go for horror fans. I will put the link in the info bar. This game is going to be released on Halloween. That's right. It's a ghost game. So you're going to be going around your house trying to find ghosts and everywhere else. The trailer will be in the info bar for you. Looks good. And I cannot wait for this. So, like I said, it's coming. We'll see what happens with this. This opens the doors for many other things, for, you know, augmented reality and what it can do for people. I'm just saying it can be fun. I can only imagine what's going to happen. I turn on my phone during that game and something pops. I'm like, <laughs> you know what I mean? We'll see what happens. But also, let's move on. Let's talk about the fighting game community. Some good news. That's right. Virtual Fighter gets trademark renewal by Sega, which means it's coming back. That's a good thing, all right? 
Also, the Skullgirls community releases an open letter to tournament organizers. Now, I need to talk about this because, you know, I play Skullgirls and all, but it doesn't matter if I play it or not. The fact is the community is upset that they feel as though they're being slated. They feel as though they're not being taken serious enough. That they're only going to focus now on certain venues when it comes to their game because they feel as though they're not getting the respect that they deserve. They're being overshadowed, right? And that's sad to hear. It is. Because, like I said, as a community, you should be supporting all of your people. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter what games you play. A community is a community. So when someone says, look, we feel as though we're not getting enough respect, you know, we're not getting enough limelight to keep this going, as a community, you put your differences aside and say, you know what, let's look at this and see if it's true. Because if it's true, then we have to back them. Let's make them stronger than what it is. Let's help them grow. No! Instead, in the comment section, you act like a bunch of fucking idiots. That's what you do. This is how you kill, this is how you effectively kill a game by a community. Because of lack of caring. And I say this due to the fact that people are just like, well, you're not really Capcom, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. And you've seen other people, they're just like, you should just be happy with what you have now. Fuck off. Fuck you. Alright, that's what you're telling people, to just be satisfied with what they got. Like I said, as a community, you should be growing. It should be getting bigger. Not telling people, oh, you should just be satisfied with what you got already. So, that's it. And then they have all these fucking excuses on why the game's not doing good. Oh, well, it's only a ripoff of Marvel vs. Capcom, blah, blah, blah. Who gives a shit what you think it's ripoff of? Who cares? Alright, because then you can go down the history of, oh, well, air dashing was in this, and before Marvel's Capcom, and so you can go into that argument. But the fact is, you are doing this once again, act like a bunch of fucking idiots, short-sighted, lack of perspective, and you know what? It's games like this that will get killed. Because they don't have the, you know, the backing that, you know, the huge AAA developers have. Or should I say publishers have. The fact that the community, this is the argument you're having, listen, you can look at it, in the comment section of that article. That's all they're doing is fucking arguing. And trying to try to, to rationalize why it's not getting bigger. It's not about why it's not getting bigger. It's okay, they're in trouble. This part of our community is in trouble. Let's help them. But it seems like nobody wants to take that step. Unreal. It doesn't matter what fucking game it is. This is the maturity, once again, of the fighting game community. And, of course, as usual, you're getting duped. Because, for those who don't know, Dead or Alive 5. That's right. Once again, coming out with another season pass, people. That's right. This makes season pass number 5. Yeah, that's smart. Keep getting fucking milked. Because all you're doing is setting a standard to these developers, these publishers, that it's okay to do. And they'll keep nickel and diming the fuck out of you. Instead of just sitting back and saying, hey, wait. I'll just wait for a full edition. No, let's just keep milking the fuck out of them because they'll keep paying for it like a bunch of dumbasses. Yeah, that's smart. Let's move on. Let's talk about Polygon. Fucking Polygon. I cannot believe, I put this, at this point, Polygon, you should be blacklisted. For those who don't know, Polygon breaks an embargo agreement with King of Fighters 14 and gamers called onto it because they leaked the 24 minute video that was shown when it wasn't supposed to be at all. Now, I don't know how much of an accident that really was because I played this. First off, it's Polygon. I don't fucking trust Polygon, number one. Number two, anybody who uploads videos, you know and I know that when you try to upload a video, you have a, a, a chance to put it on private or pro you can do it right from the beginning. Private, public, you can do it during the uploading process or during its processing process you can do this. Not to mention, you can, go, uh, was it? you can work with the thumbnail, you can do a number of things while this video is uploading. Don't tell me that they was like, oh, we'll keep it public, oh, we got caught, and then they make it private. I don't feel as though that was accidental at all. However, I will agree that they're a bunch of fucking idiots. You understand that you broke embargo. You know what that means? That means so damn near a death sentence for companies when it comes, you know, when it comes to the media. You should be blacklisted. And you know what? If you haven't learned from Kotaku and you see what's going on with them, I hope you get the same treatment as far as I'm concerned. It is absolutely ridiculous that you would do something like that. Unreal. SNK, please, from now on, do not mess with Polygon. Do not even give them the time of day as far as I'm concerned. That is, that's disgusting that they would do something like that. And I don't feel as though that's accidental at all. But there's more people that are trying to hurt SNK. But those are what I'm talking about. SNK releases a statement on broken King of Fighters release date. That's right. Retailers are breaking street date from when this game is supposed to come out. And 
They're letting people buy it. Now, of course, SNK didn't find out until the fans found out that they were, you know, they were buying the game, you know, and of course, came through the community, heard through the grapevine, and people let SNK know, look, these companies are selling your game way before it's supposed to come out, you know, they're breaking street date. And SNK, being classy, like I said, released a statement on the issue, and I put it like this, it's actually a good nod to the fans and community as well. And that's why I love SNK. First off, let's put it like this. We saw the little bumps in the road not too long ago with SNK, pachinko machines and all this stuff and buyouts and stuff. But let's be honest here. They are listening because that's what it is. That statement alone says that they listen to the community on the game being brought out early. Okay? And then the fact that they, t they say to you in that, you know, releasing that statement, please think of others, meaning in the community, before you post spoilers. It goes to show you that SNK is listening to the fans, and they're hand-in-hand -hand with the fans. Something that other fighting companies, or game, you know, companies who make fighting games, don't do. So as far as I'm concerned, this goes to show you that SNK is trying to meet the community halfway when it comes to trust. They are trying. They're listening, and they're trying to, you know, trying to do the best they can. I have to say, very classy of SNK to do. Thumbs up, as far as I'm concerned. Now, speaking of the opposite... Of not having any class at all, I guess we should talk about Mike Ross, right? Yeah. For those who don't know, not too long ago, Mike Ross decided to act like a fucking child, alright? And go nuts because he decided, you know, he wasn't winning at a game when it came to Street Fighter V. Rage quit, throws the controller, throws his money, just acts like a little bitch. That's right. For those who have Nazis, let's look at this right now. Let's, yeah, seriously, this is what I'm talking about the immaturity of the FGC. Break the stick. Let go I'm gonna the break stick. the stick. Let me Let throw the stick. Let, go of Let the me break the. Let me break the gun. You should have just play the Yuri. Oh no. Spinning mixer. No, Mike, you gotta just come back free. It's law all day. Free. Law all day. Law <sighs> all day. No. Mike. Mike. <laughs> That's how we <laughs> lost our jab <laughs> button, Mike. <laughs> oh. Maybe if Wolf Chrome wasn't your model, this wouldn't be happening. <laughs> That's what you're asking. Now, what? What? Oh, him? Or me? Him? That's what happens to people that look up to Wolf Chrome. Why is he jumping? Teach him a lesson, Mike. What? Mike, teach him I'm a lesson. So teach him a lesson, Mike. Get him. What is happening? <laughs> the leg! <laughs> Did we rage quit on him? Please tell yeah. me that was you, Adam, back there. <laughs> yeah. Rage quit on him. Alright, I want to have a serious right. discussion. No, le <laughs> listen, let <my> <laughs> just sit down, calm down, calm down. Let's have a serious discussion. This is this is serious talk too. So, I had a very serious talk with all of my brothers out there in the UK. Oh, Mike threw all his money. He, how much is that? That's like a tip. That's there's a twenty. Yeah. I think I see a five. I think I, I see a. I see a Bart card in there. Oh, but yeah, let's have a serious discussion. This will make you feel better. So, me and my UK brothers was having a very nice talk, very nice discussion. He does not want to talk to you right now. He's not he, listening to a word you're saying. He's listening. And if he's not listening, then we'll have this discussion. Sure. All right. So, he's we were talking about... Yeah? He's done. He's un... He's... He's actually taking... He's actually... Yeah. He's actually gonna leave. No. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Well. Um. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Okay. I guess. Uh, so uh, let's have uh -huh. this real discussion though before we take the question. Since sure. Mike is clearly gone. Okay. Look at this fucking mental midget act like this over the grandstanding out of all things. Let's be honest here, people. That's grandstanding. It's not just about rage quitting, because look, everyone gets a little bit salty, okay? But if you know that it's lag, and you're, you're claiming it's lag, 
and you're online, we already know. People who play video games online, you know lag is a thing. So, alright. If you want chocolate with the lag, then don't take it that seriously then. Just take your L. Hold it. Because you know you can do better if you play face to face. Not that big of a deal. But instead, you want to rage. You want to throw shit like a little child. You're a grown ass man. You understand that, right? And then you want, here's the grandstanding part, because you know that you're in a studio and you're probably with all your little friends, that's what it is, you all know each other. You know that if you were in an arcade or just another area in a convention and you took out your fucking wallet and you threw it on the ground, do you know what's going to happen there? Someone will take your fucking money. Don't tell me that all of a sudden everyone's going to sit around and let you pick it the fuck up. Anybody who's ever been on the street, when you drop, if someone drops some money, what happens? Somebody's just like, it's mine. And they keep going. They act like it never happened. There's people who will walk over to a dollar and put their foot over top of it and wait for people to walk by so that when the coast is clear, they can bend out, act like they're picking up, you know, tiny shoe and pick up the dollar. We see this time and time again. If you'd have thrown your money, because you're surrendering your money, you're throwing it down. It's not you dropped it. You're throwing it down. Twenties, tens, fives. You won't think someone's like, oh, it's my shit now. Because obviously you don't want it. Don't give me this shit. It's, it, it, you gotta be kidding me with this type of grandstand. This is the type of dude that y'all wanna, you know, praise as being one of the, the big guys, one of the ambassadors of the fucking FGC. That's what you wanna do. Seriously. What's the matter, Mike? Not good at, at Street Fighter 5? This is not the first time you rage quit either on this game. Not like Street Fighter 4, is it? Yeah. The fact is, this is, it, it shouldn't be this way. The fact that you would get a guy who's constantly on here, you know, constantly on, you know, doing commentary work and all that stuff, and you want to praise him, and he acts like that? If this was real sports, again, if this was real sports, because you're trying to be esports, if this was real fucking sports, guess what? He'd have been fine. He'd have possibly been fired. Of course, the network would not let that happen. You understand that this is why it's still not taken seriously, because of clowns like him acting that way. Unfucking real if you don't get the fuck out of my face, this old child is bullshit, you're grown ass. Look, when you're acting like that over video games, pressing buttons, it tells me you'd never make it in the real world if you was pressed. But speaking of rage quitting, alright? Street Fighter V, The Prentice uh, Rage Quitters, and more in the August-September update. Pretty much, not only are going to take your points away from you, but if you decide to rage quit, they're going to time you out. they got to put you on timeout. Yeah, that's what they got to do. they got to put your little kitties on timeout, because that's what they're doing. So pretty much, if you rage quit and you're caught, Capcom will, make, will not let you back online for a while. Let you have a cool-down period, because of the way you're acting. Unreal. That's what y'all, that's what y'all turned it into now. Y'all understand it, right? That's what you've turned it into now. You've turned it into timeout. For the kitties. But y'all should be looked up, you know, you should be looked upon as, as great, you know, players and, you know, yeah, and just your demand. Yeah, your demand acting like that. Walk off the fucking stage, take off your microphone, you don't get the fuck out of here with that old bullshit. I'm going to throw the and kick it, yeah. Man, if you, man. Nah. Nah, that's grandstanding. And some part of it's legit rage, the rest of it is grandstanding. You you next to another grown ass man like that, they gonna call you on that shit. Fuck wrong with you. Stop acting like a little bitch. Seriously. But in more news with Capcom, for those who don't know, because you guys and girls sent it to me, to bring it to my attention. Capcom has censored Darkstalker's resurrection. That's right. Here is some of the official art. Especially Felicia, which I find kind of fucking funny, actually. Uh Felicia has been censored. That's right, so let's look at it. So more censorship, the hair covers up the side boob, and you actually put a cat where her ass is. So, you put a pussy where her ass is, huh? That, that, that's where you want to go? Really, Capcom? That's where you want? Okay. <laughs> I say, it's hard to take any of this serious when you see how people are acting this week, and you see all the complaints, rape, and, 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 and fucking, what is it, and, 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 I don't feel safe in my own home because of Pokemon Go, and you got fucking clowns throwing controllers over because they lost in a video game. It's a fucking video game. You understand that? Once again, these are supposed to be, because you know, all of them want to be so respected. All of them want to be, well, I'm the man, and you should respect me, you should follow me, you should like me, and all this, and the rest of you are just nothing but a bunch of dorks, and then you act like that? Guess what? That makes you no different than the people that you accuse. You understand that? I understand that people, listen, I understand, salt is, salt is everywhere. People gonna get salty. But that's bullshit. That is. He only pulled that shit because he knew where he was at. That's why. 
You did that in a public place where you don't know people, that money had been gone. Straight up, been gone. Bunch of bullshit, grandstanding, fucking... Mm. Anyways, yeah, I want to say a couple things that I probably can't say on here right now for that. But, let's move on. Not too long ago, we talked about Power Instinct, right? And I said, you know, deserves a remake. Well, apparently, some of you got back to me and was like, you know what? There's not a remake coming, but there is a sequel coming. For those who don't know, Power in uh, was it? It's, I'm sorry, it should be already out. Power Instinct, it's in the Japan PSN store for what you guys told me. Uh, Power Instinct, Matra Melee. That's right. So, Japan PSN store has the game, alright? Yeah, so, also, let's talk about this week's game I'm going to show you. That's right. Number of old school games. This one, I'm going to say, doesn't need a remake. No, it should stay away. And for those who know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about Tattoo Assassins. That's right. It doesn't need, it, 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 it's clearly, it does not need a fucking remake. However, I'm not going to show you, usually I show the combo videos and all. For those who remember this game, it was almost like a blatant ripoff of Mortal Kombat when it came out. And it was really, really, a really bad rip of Mortal Kombat when it came out. But there really wasn't that many, uh, much combos going. The gameplay was pretty bad. However, I will show you today the fatalities, which are absolutely hilarious. Maya wins. Maya win. win. Get up and fight. Win. Hey, 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 hey,
Billy win. Anna win. Get up and fight. Absolutely horrible. Just take it away. Like seriously, it's just oh, it's an eyesore. You have to understand that this game back in the day, it was oh, it was so bad. I would rather play Way of the Warrior. I would. I would just. This is just absolutely disgusting to play. I would recommend. I wouldn't recommend it unless you want a good laugh or you want to do like a, a riff track to it or something. By all means, play it then. But this game is horrible, and it has, I believe, it has mods where um you can see the people naked. So it's like, yeah, no, nah, mm -mm, mm -mm, no, no. Game's horrible. Just stay away. I would not recommend a remake for this one. <laughs> but let's move on. Okay, shall we? For those who don't know, in London, August 18th, uh, Free Play City launch night. That's right. It's actually an arcade. They will have all these arcade games going on there. Uh, I'll put the link in the info bar so you know where the directions are, where it's actually going to be at, if you're interested. Um, lots of fighting games are going to be there. Lots of just arcade games in general will be there. Should be a great time. Because I put it like this, if I was in London right now, which if you ask me, I really should be in London right now, I, I would definitely be going to this. I'm just saying. Also, I'm going to move on. Zelda light -like game Oceanhorn comes to the PS4, Xbox One on September 7th. Now, they're saying it's a Zelda light -like game, so pretty much you're going to get that because, you know, Nintendo has a stranglehold on Zelda, so they got to make their other games. I mean, let's be honest, the last time we had a Zelda light -like game, uh, when it comes to a, you know, I won't say a big developer, but, you know, it was it did somewhat successful, was 3D Dot Heroes, and that's still a fun game to play. To this day, I still play 3D Dot Heroes, you know what I mean? On top of the other, you know, Zelda-like -like games. But also, you have your mobile games. It, I don't want to call Bastion a Zelda-like -like game, but I guess you somewhat could, I guess? I don't know, you know, when it comes to your mobile games. Of course, those games also made it to the PSN and Xbox Live and stuff like that as well. So, let's move on as well. Final Fantasy XV! That's right, we talked about season passes before, but has now been delayed. That's right, the game is delayed until the Master Disc version of the game is complete, which now will come out November 29th. That's right, and because this game is gearing up, we're seeing SJWs once again try and step in with their bullshit articles. Nope. Nope, not going there, not falling for your bullshit. Don't sit here and tell me that Final Fantasy XV fans are so anti-woman. Are we supposed to forget what happened with Final Fantasy X2 and everything? Like, come on. The whole cast was damn near women. Did anyone complain about that? No. All the costumes and all people still played it. So don't give me the shit that all of a sudden it's anti-woman. Do your research. Stop trying to bait people with your gender politics. Get the fuck out of here. Okay? But there's more when it comes to people acting fucking crazy. Again, like you haven't seen enough of it, right? Yeah. There's more. Ubisoft. That's right. The creative director... I want to say... Pele, Pale, Pale, Hofstein, or Hofstein, um, is involved in the attempt to dox, uh, was it, a, a Twitter user named Mombot. That's right. Here are the pictures of them actually saying this. That this is absolutely ridiculous that they're doing this to people. I look at the people on that fucking list. Is he Galvez? Like, they're actually conspiring to dox people. These are people, so what, Gamergate? Pretty much has your number. That's what it was. They're showing what's going on. These are the same people who said, Oh no, doxing is wrong. Doxing is bad. Unless it's such and such. So you're justifying, you know, if it's on your side happening, it's wrong and bad. But if it's someone else that you don't like, then it's okay. That's bullshit. You're either for it or you're against it. It's that simple. But the fact that a creative director has the time to step in and do this, you know, because Ubisoft, let's be honest here, your games are shit as of late for a number of years now. You'd think that you'd be working on that instead of worrying about people on fucking Twitter. But no, this is what you do. Like I said, once again, you have no lives. That's what it is. These people that are doing this, because you've got to be kidding me that you're working in the industry, all right? You're a creative, creative director, making, you know, making games and all. What do you do after that you're, when you're not making games? You're going around doxing people? Instead of living life, instead of going outside and having friends and going to parties and everything like that, this is what you do? This is your hobby? To dox people. All right, all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you disagree with them when it comes to, you know, video games or even ethics and journalism. Whatever you want to call it. The fact is, this is ridiculous. And remember, these are the people who are supposed to be taking the high road. Remember, they were supposed to be the moral crusaders. 
Now they're doing this. So now you're no different, once again, than those you accuse. You've been caught. It's done. Ubisoft, once again, now you have to speak on this. And if you think about it, it's starting to make a little bit of sense now why Ubisoft brought in Anita or they had all those other people come in. You know what I mean? We saw the pictures. It's really interesting to see how this is going to work now. But it's interesting, like I said, all these SJWs, they're just trying to hold on. They're just slowly holding on because they don't have anything left. If you realize, companies have stopped giving a damn about what they have to say. Because it doesn't sell. They know our community isn't racist. Well, a good amount of the community isn't racist, isn't sexist. You're going to have your racists. You're going to have your sexists. Because, like I said, every time they do something, they make themselves look like hypocrites. Especially the media. It's amazing how the media just not too long ago, you know, tried to get on Deus Ex. Once again, Deus Ex for appropriating black culture, but you went and did it not too long ago yourself. Just not, you know, when it came to Watch Dogs and all that stuff, and you actually used those riots, didn't you? You did. And when you were called on that, you got quiet. Yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let, let's, come on, let's go. Let's, let's fucking go. Scott Pilgrim Creator says, Number one goal in life is to get the game re-released. Now, I love Sp- uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the Game. I'm... Remember, I did it last last year. Was it as a stream for uh, for charity? So it was a number of us playing multiplayer. So it was really fun. I, I'm all for this. Let it have a re-release. And like I said, I still have all this stuff. I you know I never got rid of it, so I can still play it. You know, but definitely needs a re-release. The the game, the beat 'em up, is so good. I mean, seriously, you haven't seen something like this since River City Ransom. And I feel as though you can even go back to Double Dragon, even. But still, River City Ransom. That's what it, it, it feels like more than Double Dragon. Um, River City Ransom, and Scott Pilgrim, as you know, River City Ransom get Raycon another one, too. Um, but, uh, what is it, Scott Pilgrim definitely deserves, you know, definitely deserves more credit. It is a, a legit, quality, solid game. It deserves a re-release. I'm for it. Also, more news. There's a new, ma- a new Bandai game coming out that's been announced called Little Nightmares, where you actually have to help a little girl through her nightmares, which actually looks pretty cool. So, I'll put a link in the info bar for that. Also, The Evil Within and Rage did so well that they're warranted sequels. That's right, so get ready for those sequels. Also, um, in a little bit of news for those who do em- uh, emulation, multi-emulator uh, Metafin uh, now has Sega Saturn compatibility. That's right, so get at it. Sega Saturn comp- compatibility. Radiant Silver Gun. Seriously, Panzer Dragoon. Go at it. Go at it. Seriously, go at it. And the last bit of news is we have to have a talk. That's right. I don't know if anyone saw what happened this morning with Konami. Yeah, yeah. Metal Gear Survival. Or so we just call it Metal Gear Survival Horror. Now, when I watched this trailer, I didn't know what to think. I was just like, well, again, I was, I was going. I was like, what am I wa- pretty much what am I watching? Now, I saw the rage from others. I saw the confusion from others. And I was also confused because I'm not understanding why you would go this route. Now, a lot of people say, well, you know, there were zombies in Metal Gear Solid V, um, so maybe this is just a spinoff. Maybe this is an expansion. Maybe it's just DLC. Um, we don't know. We have no idea. Maybe it's a standalone game. Don't know. We don't really have any facts right now other than what we see. And the trailer that we're seeing so far, so many people hate it. They hate it. The dislike, the like ratio is crazy. Nobody likes this. So I'll put it like this, Konami. It seems as though you're still not listening to fans. Because not too long ago, remember the article that came out, Konami said, we're going to try and win our fans back. That's what they said. Well, this isn't the way to go about it. It's not. Now, this theme of survival horror could have been taken a number of ways. You didn't even have to use Metal Gear for this. You didn't have to. So, let's break this down, okay? I put it like this. If you take half of that trailer, half, and I'm talking about the second half, not the first half, take the second half of that trailer, or mid, midpoint of this trailer, you can take that, shorten the trailer, and make it a teaser trailer. Is that enough? And all you had to do was slap the Contra logo on it. And I guarantee you, people would have been like, I'll give it a chance. It's something different. Contra fans would have got hyped, because you never know what would have happened. Maybe they need something else. You can't keep fighting aliens all the time. You would have had your purists say, well, I just like it side-scrolling anyway. But maybe, maybe this could be something if they put in this much production value into it. Could have possibly did something. It would have raised some eyebrows. Would have been a lot of discussion about it. You could have actually activated an old IP and brought it back from the dead. I know. Zombies. Brought it back from the dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyways, let's move on. So you decide to go with Metal Gear. Okay. 
So it's not like you could have used Raiden and just did another Revengeance with this, because this is survival horror. So you just killed that egg already. So no, that won't work. So, Metal Gear. And you make it survival horror, and it just looks bad. It just does. It does. You're getting sucked up into the vortex, and it, okay, whatever. Whatever the case may be. All right? Like I said, we don't know much about this yet. You could have played off, was it a full screen boss fight, King of the Minions said, you know, hey, this could have, I'd like to see this as a Silent Hill type of spin. Yeah, that could have worked too. It's possible, you know? If you're going to go into a vortex and take somebody into a completely different area, it actually probably could have worked in that situation. I mean, it's a little different than what we're known with with Silent Hill, but still, you can make that crossover. You can. It, 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 it's doable. You know what I mean? A little wacky, but then again, Silent Hill, some of the endings are wacky anyway. But it's still doable. Konami, you could have done so much more with this other than just Metal Gear, Metal Gear, Metal, metal Gear. Come on. Now, of course, also... We are not sure whether Kojima approved of this or not. We don't know whether the production at the time when it was made was during on Kojima's watch or if it was after he was gone. You know what I mean? We don't know. A lot of questions that need to be answered. However, Konami, at the end of it all, you make yourself look like fucking idiots. And I say this due to the fact that it almost feels like you're doing what Capcom did with Resident Evil. It was like, okay, we want it more action-oriented, so we're going to make all these games that have more action. And then, you know, and it's not survival horror. So, but you're doing the opposite. So, you had a game that had espionage into it, and had action, and I like, believe this, and a lot of people will probably say, well, there's not enough action in Metal Gear. You have to understand that the action that you get is usually severely over the top. I mean, should we go back to Metal Gear Solid 4? And I know a lot of people like say, but cutscenes, dude, you had Snake walking through a fucking nuclear, like, seriously, come on. He was crawling the entire time. The nuclear, the timer is going on the nuclear, the nuclear sub, you know, in the nuclear sub. Then afterwards, you're having this brutal fist fight on top of the ship. Like, come on. You want action, you got action. You did. But, you've got to be kidding me. That at the end of all this, Konami, this is the only thing you can come up with. And, like I said on, on Twitter, I was like, I got nothing. And you guys and girls was like, Apparently neither does Konami. Yeah, it's... You've got to be kidding me. To me, like I said, I don't want to overreact to it, but looking at it from different angles and perspectives on what they could have done with it, it almost makes me feel as though, like, I can imagine myself as a fly on the wall at the boardroom where they greenlit this. And they were like, yeah, this is the idea. And everyone else is just like, okay. And I'm thinking to myself, did not one person say no to this? Not one? Seriously. No one didn't say, oh, oh, oh what, 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 what? This is really what you want to go with? No one said that. Hmm. Hmm. Just, it, it leaves me baffled. It leaves a lot of people baffled. But I'm sure we will see, you know, in today, I'm sure a lot of people are going to upload videos and just be like, fuck Konami. And they're going to be mad and they don't know much. And, of course, we have to wait until we know more. But, still, just the trailer alone, just, it, it, it set off people. I guess you could say it triggered people. It set off people. It set off fans. And you already had fans saying, I'll never go back to Konami anyway after what happened with the treatment with Kojima and how Metal Gear Solid 5 was treated. And then you do this. And if anything, it's probably just going to reinforce the fact that they don't want to come back. They're done with you. You could have did so much more. Konami dropped the ball again. Like I said, don't worry about Metal Gear so much and bring up these other IPs. I'm not trying to hear anymore that, you know, well, we're trying to find the right developer, because remember, that was said in the interview, we're trying to find the right developer for Silent Hill, and we're trying to find the right theme for Silent Hill, and look, you have all this stuff, take a shot. Seriously, throw something against the wall and see if it fucking sticks at this point, because if you keep riding Metal Gear, it's going to fuck you in the long run. Have you not learned from Square? Huh? You keep riding Final Fantasy? Yeah, it's not going to be what it used to be. But this one, this, this Final Fantasy actually looks pretty good. But, like I said, you can't do that with Metal Gear. You have to move on from Metal Gear. Give it a rest. You don't have to just retire it unless, you know, some people do want to see it retired. But just let it sleep for a while. And then come back, you know, with other stuff that, you know, in its place. Konami, you're not doing that. And the games that you do come out with that are quality, that are on the, the PSN or stuff like that, slow, slow games, you know what I mean? Little, little games here and there that you come out with, you're not going to get credit for. So who are, you, who are your big guns? Huh? Metal Gear, PES. That's what you got. That's not a good look. It's just not. 
Konami, you can do so much more, you can do so much better, but it won't get better until you get someone in there that will say no to certain things. Or we're just thinking of money. Well, if you're just thinking of money, well then guess what? You've screwed yourself. Because that's where companies go wrong. Especially when they just think of money. If you don't believe me, then you can look at Capcom for a number of years. We're just thinking of money. Where'd that get them? Hmm? They got a lot They got a lot of shit for it, didn't they? And it didn't even matter what game. Because regardless what game came out, what was Street Fighter, Devil May Cry, there's it, it, a number of games they had. Resident Evil, fans were upset. You already have fans saying, fuck you, we're not coming back. You gotta get them back. You have to do something better than this. It's very disappointing to see right now. And like I said, that's just trailer impressions for me, you know. Very, very disappointing. Anyways, I believe we're done. What comes the news? Everyone has just lost their fucking mind this week. And I feel as though even through this video, I probably lost a little bit of my mind. Because you've got to be kidding me. Look, every time I see something like this, I say to myself, you can't be that crazy. You can't be that stupid. You can't be that childish, right? Yeah. Because in the real world, none of this type of stuff would fly. None of it. Like I said, you want to blame virtual critters on raping you? People will to tell you, go get psychiatric help. That's how the real world works. If you want to act the fool and throw stuff and break shit because you're losing, people are going to call you a bitch. They're going to call you mentally mentally. They're going to call you all kinds of stuff. Get hold of yourself. You're supposed to be an adult. That's how the real world works. That's the problem with this community right now. And like I said, a lot of this wasn't community today. But when you hold these guys up to the moon, this type of standard, this measuring stick, and then they act like this, it tells you that it's time for them to go. Seriously. It's the lag. Okay, well, if you know it's the lag, don't take it so seriously then. But I want to win. Well, guess what? Wait another time to win then. If you think, if you're going to keep blaming lag, seriously. And we, like I said, we've seen Ross rage quit face to face too. You know what I mean? And, and, and was it in that uh, little thing they had with Mankins with Team Ross and everything? He quit in that. Captain, quit. If you guys want to be known as captains and leaders, because that's what when you get the captain label, you're a leader. And you quit on your team, you ain't worth shit. Anyways, people, go have fun with your games. As you can see, a lot of these people are taking it way too fucking seriously. And it's, it's, it's turning their minds into fucking mush. Go have fun. I will talk to y'all later. Y'all be safe. Tomorrow, we're going to stream. We're going to have some fun for charity. Talk to you then. Y'all be safe. I'm out.